Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gamer Tech video. My name is Amata, and I hope you're having an amazing day. We're going to kick things off today with yet more Intel Otter Lake benchmarks. Yes, as we rapidly approach the Intel Innovation event where we expect the company to unveil the 12th generation processors, we have been seeing the leaks and benchmarks coming thick and fast. Over the last few days, we've had Sysoft Sandra leaks, Cinebench R20 and R23, and today we have a CPU-Z built-in benchmark results, which shows yet more promising performance for the 12900K. Now, just as a bit of a disclaimer before I go into the benchmark itself, this is from the Billy Billy forums. You can, of course, find it linked below. Now, the processor here is not labeled but we can see that it has a 24 thread configuration which of course is the configuration of the older lake 12900k with all the red tab out of the way we see a score here of 825 points which is a staggering 27 percent higher than that of the zen 3 5950x that is a pretty damn impressive result especially when you combine it with the recent Cinebench R20, R23, and Sysoft Sandra results. And all of these results point to Older Lake 12900K having some seriously strong single thread performance. And let's not also forget that an important distinction between Older Lake and Rocket Lake is, of course, you know, the improvement in performance from the 11th generation, which, you know, generally was received with a bit of a eh by the collective you know, PC gamer and tech enthusiast world. But with a single thread score on CPU-Z of 682, you can already get the picture that you know, with 8, 825, Old Lake is significantly better than its predecessor, which is obviously great news. But of course, we should always wait for independent benchmarks across you know a variety of tasks like gaming, workload and synthetic such as Cinebench and so on when the old late processors actually release but this is still looking pretty damn promising especially when you combine it with some Sysoft Sandra results uh, basically they compiled some early performance previews again of the 12900k this was helpfully shared by Tom Apisak over on Twitter and was screenshotted which is good because well it has now been taken down off the Sysoft Sandra website so basically they compiled some performance results for the 12900k again early performance results but we do see three categories here vector simd native cryptographic native and financial analyst native now one very very important thing to keep in mind is this of sandra themselves admit that it, there's not enough data here to draw any final conclusions and not all of the tests have been run on the 12900k but i felt since we we're talking about benchmarks for old lake be remiss not to mention this now, I'm sure you'd all agree that while, again, we can't draw any final conclusions from these results, it is interesting that these are kind of running in counter to the other leaks where the 12900K just isn't a clear winner here. It's barely beating the 5900X, 5900X, excuse me, in some tests, and is even beaten by the 11900K in some tests, but this is exactly why we should wait for full, independent benchmarks when the product is actually out into the wild. But we're going to move on from that now to some news regarding Intel Arc Alchemist, otherwise known as DD2. Now this is a small thing, but nonetheless interesting, thankfully discovered by Momomo over on Twitter. You can of course find their tweet and everything else I've sourced for this video in the description below. So they have basically discovered some guidelines for the naming of the upcoming Arc Alchemist GPUs, which again is otherwise known as Intel XE DG2. So we're basically going to be seeing some surprisingly simple naming conventions here for Intel Arc GPUs. Alchemist is simply going to be A, dash, 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 whatever the number is. Battle Mage is going to be B, Celestial C, Druid is D, and E. Obviously, we do not know if and what that particular series will be called. So again, nothing to throw a parade over, but still something rather interesting. Personally, I'm actually really excited for the Intel Arc Alchemist GPUs. You know, it's obviously really interesting in itself that Intel is going to be entering the discrete GPU market, but I'm just curious to see exactly what Alchemist A is going to look like in terms of the, you know, the actual shroud and so on, performance, gaming, how is it going to compete against RDNA 2 and RTX 30, and of course the upcoming RDNA 4 and RTX 40 Lovelace cards from AMD and Nvidia respectively. But obviously, you know, this is a roadmap. We're not necessarily expecting Alchemist to compete against all of those things. You know, Battle Mage might compete against, you know, RTX 40 and, and so on a bit better than Alchemist. Obviously, 
we just don't know, but I'm really excited to see exactly what Intel's Arc GPUs have in store for us in terms of performance, ray tracing, variable rate shading, all of this other stuff, and just can't wait to get my hands on it to actually review and, you know, just see what Intel came up with for when it comes to a discrete graphics card. Because, you know, I've said a billion times at this point that obviously, you know, the GPU market is so screwed at the moment. It's actually crazy. And obviously we've been saying for a while that it's going to take some time, analysts are saying mid-2022, for the market to return to normal. But a third player in the market, a competitor that isn't AMD or NVIDIA, can definitely help things along. And speaking of NVIDIA, our final topic is actually from them as... Something very interesting is happening in the land of DLSS upsampling. So basically they recently began inviting developers to test at the near newest build, excuse me, for DLSS and obviously submit their experiences and da 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 da, da. so basically gets their feedback. And NVIDIA said, quote, NVIDIA R is enabling developers to explore and evaluate experimental AI models for deep learning super sampling. Developers can download experimental dynamic link libraries, DLLs, test how the latest DLSS research enhances their games and provide feedback for future improvements. One of the key advantages of a deep learning approach to super sampling is that the AI model can continuously improve through ongoing training on NVIDIA's supercomputer. We are inviting the developer community to test the latest experimental DLSS models straight off the supercomputer and provide us with your feedback. So I'm sure you'll agree this is all really interesting because DLSS 2 was a huge improvement over that of the original iteration of DLSS. So just imagine what DLSS 3 could look like if they're, you know, actually getting developers involved at this early stage, you know, really improving that AI because, you know, again, they are allowing developers to train and test using NVIDIA's supercomputer. So obviously they are still looking to improve visual quality on more games and obviously iron out any bugs, maybe add, you know, a couple of other things in there. There's obviously a lot of room to grow for DLSS and I just find it really cool that NVIDIA is still pushing, 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 and look forward to seeing what DLSS is going to look like thanks to the involvement of these developers. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It's about a great deal, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.